Welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast Show Expresso as we enter the final stanza down and we do it oh, on an inspirational note. Now, having been faced with a life-threatening disease or any kind of life-threatening situation and given the opportunity to change your stars, what would you do? Well, one man took the opportunity to quite literally change the direction of his life completely and give us, the rest of the world, the opportunity to turn an eye inward and see what we are doing to the planet around us and what effect that is having on us as a species. David Johnson joins us in studio. Welcome to it, my friend. Yeah, thank you for having me. We've been chatting over Twitter, well, very briefly yesterday, but great to now have you in studio. Um, take, give, give us a bit of a backstory. I know you were joking about it. I'm not quite at the level where I can joke <laughs> about testicular cancer just yet. Maybe a long, strong, Armstrong joke or two, but... Um, Tell us a bit about your backstory. You seem very comfortable talking about it. Yeah, I mean, last year I um, came up with this idea because I'm really passionate about raising awareness of the impact of human population growth and the things people do. So I formulated this idea, which is now what I'm calling the Too Much Too Many project, but it required a bit of a leap of faith to go from being a lawyer and having a secure income to then doing something new and risking your life savings. So then in December last year, I found out that I had cancer. And that kind of sort of is the reminder that you ought to go and follow your passions rather than, you know, sticking in a corporate job that you're not enjoying. But, I mean, potentially that could have sent you in a completely different direction. What was it? What was the X factor or that deciding influence that made you turn it into a positive? Yeah, I think it's just that it's a topic that I've been really passionate about for a long time. Um, and I got this idea and I just thought I could really do something with it. So I've been working with organisations around the country now for several months, from the Endangered Wildlife Trust to Pathfinder. And together we've been able to come up with over 100 different subtopics in this um, story. So when I start my road trip, I'm going to go via 100 places nationwide, and each one is going to be a different, or highlight a different impact of more people or more consumption. So I can try and get people interested in a topic which I think is largely ignored. So in other words, it's time to move away from stats and blasting people with redundant information and actually yeah. give them the human interest story, the, those tales that are going to get them talking about what you need to. Yeah, people aren't interested in fertility statistics or population growth statistics. So this is going to be 100 stories, and it's going to be personal stories on how a community, real people, or a species or a landscape is impacted by population growth, yeah. Um, South Africa offers us this wonderful microcosm of the rest of the world and that we've got some of the most untouched natural resources and areas here. Conversely, we've got some of the most overpopulated and, and in a social, you know, economic sense, some great examples of what not to do. So it really does give you a great litmus test. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you brought up the, the first photograph here. This, wow. this sort of makes the point because Cape Town's got a population <sighs> of about three and a half million people. But we're surrounded by a mountain and the sea. So there is a real impact on people as we get a higher population. They've got to go somewhere. So the first article of the 100 is actually about a guy that features in the next photograph. So there's a community of people. There's a, well, this is Dan. There's um, him and 120 families lived um, next to Maitland Cemetery. One of the issues of population growth is that more people means more dead people. And more dead people want to be buried. So this community of 120 people have now all been evicted to Umfalani so that the cemetery can, can be extended. Can be have you seen that? Well, you would have seen that cemetery. It's massive. Yeah. Massive. But the point is I want to tell interesting stories. So this is the story of Dan and his people, just a way of making it as a more interesting Relevant. tag rather than just statistics, yeah. Of course, you, um, in your, your legal history, you know, you've, you've been involved in things that were kind of leading you to this point, um, city planning. You've, you've had a, a kind of a, a very mixed or colourful path to get you to this point. Um, you're also a field guide or a qualified ranger. Yeah, I mean, it's one of the reasons why I moved to South Africa because the, the sort of the landscape and the wildlife and the people here are so much more interesting and diverse. That's why I left London six years ago, um, and uh, where I was an environmental lawyer and I did town planning work as well. So I've always been involved with the impacts of property developments and schemes on the environment and on people. So yeah, but, I, but I'm, I'm interested in the impacts on the people like Dan that you showed, and also... I was going to say, the baboons, you couldn't keep them out of it. And if yeah. you look at, at how residents and nature have been wanting to, to find a balance, Chapman's Peak offers us a wonderful example. Absolutely. I mean, this guy here is one of the baboon monitors is actually paintballing baboons, and it's a really controversial topic, <laughs> and I'd love to know what people think of the article I've written that's on my website, but... Um, as we get more people and have more urbanisation, obviously we get more and more wildlife conflicts and it's just one of the realities of more people. Take us through the journey. Um, where do you start? How is it all going to unfold? Give us uh, some of the, the practicals. 
Four articles so far in Cape Town. I leave on Thursday, then I'm going to head through the Western Cape, then to the Eastern Cape. Got a picture here from uh, the Trans Sky. I was about to say, ah, oh, they recognise that landscape. Yeah, oh. it's, it's from the 1970s. I've been put in touch with this fantastic guy. He was a doctor in the Trans Sky in the 70s. His name's Ronald, and a, an ex colleague of his, Pumla, is going to put us up in the Trans Sky. And we're going to go to some of the places where Ronald's wife took this photographic record of the Trans Sky in the 70s. We're going to return to the places that of these photos and highlight the differences from then to now in an area that the population's doubled since the 60s and talk wow. to the people to see how you know, how it's impacted their, their culture and the landscape. And it does offer a wonderful microcosm there again where you've got a very rural side yeah. of South African life, but it's, as you say, it's developing so quickly. You look at how those little towns, the massive um, depots they have there mm. now, the, um, the clinics that are popping up, it, it really is a, um, you know, this, this chalk and cheese situation. Yeah. Um, it really is a, a wonderful opportunity. Are you nervous, David? Um, I am nervous um, because a lot of these issues are controversial and I'm having to become an expert in all sorts of different fields. Um, but it's a really exciting journey, so I'm, yeah, there's some nerves, but also I'm really looking forward to it as well. Oh, man, I cannot wait to continue this conversation as you take each step in your journey. Where can we follow you? Do you have a blog? What's your website? How yeah. can we reach you while you're out on the road? Um, please go to the website, which is www.toomuchtoomany.co.za, um, so two with T-double-O. Um, like the Facebook page, uh, so then you can get the updates of when I'm telling sure. you of obviously when the next article's out, and uh, you can follow me on Twitter at, at David Johnson SA. Awesome stuff. Thanks for taking a South African domain as well. It's great. No. <laughs> <laughs> David, what an absolute pleasure, man. No, Inspiring stuff. Me. Good luck. Um, we can't wait to see, see what comes out of this incredible investigation. Thank you very much. Um, unbelievable journey of David Johnson kicks off this coming week. He is going to be examining the impact of humans on our earth and what we can do, finding those stories that make it relevant for you and I. But check out his Facebook page. Follow him online. It sounds like it's going to be an incredible odyssey. We're going to take a quick break. We'll see you on the other side side.